Okay, in this video we're talking sound, sound wave, sound effects, Doppler effect, and something called beats. So we're taking in a good few of the uh, topics that you learn about when you learn about mechanical waves and learn about sound and, and so on. So we're looking at problem 1652 from Jung and Friedman. So while sitting in your car by the side of the road, you're approached by your friend who happens to be in an identical car. You blow the car's horn, which has a frequency of 260 hertz. Your friend blows his car's horn, which is identical to yours, and you hear a, what's called a beat frequency of six hertz. How fast is your friend approaching you? So first of all, we need to do a little bit of revision on what beats is. So beats is when, when you've got a, two waves that are quite close in frequency overlapping with one another, they interfere with each other as shown here in our uh, example with the red and uh, blue waves now these are not drawn very accurately they're just drawn by hand with the pencil here basically what happens is when we superimpose those waves on each other we get something like what we have on the bottom there where we have this kind of pulsing wave here and the beat frequency is this frequency here so it's the distance between these two nodes on this uh, superposition of these two waves so if we've got two car horns operating at the same frequency. So the frequency here, F uh, car, we'll call it, is equal to 260 hertz. But, so the listener, he's emitting 260 hertz. The source is also emitting a frequency of 260 hertz. But the problem has told us that the source is moving towards the listener. So you're stationary in your car, uh, emitting a sound or a frequency of 260 hertz. Your friend is moving towards you. And because of the Doppler effect, that is going to result in an increased frequency as observed at the point of the listener. So that, you know, the, the, if you, when you've studied the, the, the Doppler effect, you see that the waves kind of bunch up and that results in an increased frequency. So that increased frequency is going to mix, if you like, or interfere with the, the regular 260 hertz frequency that the listener is emitting. And they're going to cause a beat wave. And then what we've said is that the beat frequency or the beat wave frequency is 6 hertz. So if we know a little bit about the Doppler effect and we know a little bit about beats, we should from there be able to figure out um, how fast the car is moving towards you. So we know from studying the Doppler effect that the frequency heard or observed by the listener is equal to the velocity of the sound wave plus the velocity of the listener, divided by the velocity of the sound wave, plus the velocity of the source, multiplied by the frequency of the source. So the apparent frequency recorded by the listener is equal to the velocity of the wave, plus the velocity of the listener, divided by the velocity of the wave, plus the velocity of the source, all multiplied by the frequency of the source. Okay, so in this case, we can get rid of one term, because we know that the listener is not moving so this velocity here is zero and our equation is slightly simplified and we also know that and we'll just change the notation here the frequency of the source is 260 hertz so there we go now the beat frequency is going to be the difference so when we study beats we find out that the beat frequency is going to be the difference in frequency between the two waves so it's going to be the frequency that the listener sees minus the frequency of the source. So uh, we have a beat frequency of 6.0 hertz. 6.0 hertz. So what that tells us then is that the beat frequency is going to be equal to uh, the frequency of the listener minus 260 hertz. So the frequency, remember, of the source is 260 hertz, which is what we've put in here. So just make this link between these two here. And that's going to be equal to, oops, go back to black. That's going to be equal to 6 hertz, okay? So what that tells us then is that the frequency heard by the listener is 266 hertz. So the beat frequency is 6. The source frequency is 260. So the frequency that the listener observes now is 266 hertz. So now we can plug this into the equation, the Doppler effect equation. So we have... Uh, let's go to red here. We have the, the, the frequency that the listener hears now. We can know the velocity of the, the, the wave because it's a sound wave in air, so it's going to be 
uh, 344 meters per second, which is what we take for the velocity of a sound wave in air. And we know the frequency of the source is um, 260 hertz, which is given to us in the question. And the only unknown then in our Doppler effect equation is for the velocity of the source. And the velocity of the source is exactly what we're um, setting out to measure. Okay, so let's plug in what we have for the equation. So, velocity, sorry, uh, frequency for the listener, 266 hertz equals velocity of sound, 344, over the velocity of the sound plus the velocity, or sorry, the, yeah, the velocity of the source which is what we're trying to solve for, isn't it? Yeah, so the velocity of the source, all multiplied by the frequency of the source, which is 260 hertz. So solve that then, so let's say solve for Vs, velocity of the source, and that gives us, let me just check this one out, that gives us minus 7.8 meters per second. So, what that tells us is that the source is moving towards us at 7.8 meters per second. So then if we look at that in the context of the equation for the Doppler effect that we see in the textbooks, so we have um, V plus VL. So VL is the velocity of the, li the listener and the sign conventions in the way this equation is derived is that the velocity of the listener is gonna be positive if the motion is from the listener towards the source and negative if the opposite. But we're interested here in the velocity of the source. So we've, we've shown already in this problem that the velocity of the listener is zero. So look at velocity of the source below the line there, Vs. What that shows us is if the velocity of the source is positive, then the movement is from the listener towards the source and negative if the opposite. So if, it's, if the source is moving towards the listener, the, the, we get a negative value for the velocity of the source, which is what we get in this problem. So the negative value tells us that the source is indeed moving towards the listener at a rate of what we said was 7.8 meters per second. And that, in, that, in, sorry, that uh, results in an increase in frequency of six hertz to 266 hertz. And that's observed in our beat frequency between the two waves, the wave, from the car that we've sort of called a listener and the wave from the car that we've called the source.